Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be telling you all about how I dyed my hair blonde by myself. This was a highly requested video and I thought it would be fun to let you guys know exactly what I did, what I used, what I would do differently and just run you through the whole process. I do want to insert a little disclaimer before I start this video. I am not a cosmetologist nor am I licensed. This is just a project that I decided to take on by myself. I'm not saying this is the correct way to do it. This is just what worked for me um, and my advice based on my own experience. So my hair before I started this project was kind of like a mid-tone auburn brown. I did also have balayage type highlights in the lower half of my hair and I hadn't trimmed my ends in about four months so the general condition of my hair was good except for my ends. Based on the color charts that I looked up I think my hair was about a level five and I reached a level 10, 11 ish. It took me a few tries to get to this level. Before I get ahead of myself, I'm gonna mention all of the products um, that I used. First, you're going to need a mixing bowl. I got this one from Ion Color Brilliance and a little brush. By the way, all of these things can be found at Sally's Beauty Supply. You're going to need gloves, of course, because bleach is a very harsh chemical. These are um, black reusable latex gloves. Um, there's a whole bunch of them at Sally's, but I like the fact that they're reusable and I can wash them. You're going to need plastic processing caps. This is the 30 count. Honestly, I highly recommend that you just get the big, big packs because you're going to be using these for a lot of stuff, including deep conditioning. You're going to need developer. I got volume 20 and volume 30. Yes, these are huge, but trust me, you're going to need them because going blonde does not happen overnight and you will be having to use these products over and over. You're going to need bleach, of course. I went for the Prism Lights um, Violet Dust Free Tonal uh, Lightener because it's purple and it cancels out the brassiness. You'll also need toner. I have a couple of options here. The first one is the Wella Permanent Liquid Hair Toner in T18. This is Lightest Ash Blonde. This you do have to use with developer and it works really well. You could also tone your hair with a semi-permanent hair color. I got the Manic Panic Ultra Violet dye and the Tresemme Moisture Rich Conditioner to mix it all in. You're gonna need clips, of course, and most importantly, if you don't have a friend to help you out, you need a mirror. It's a necessity. You're gonna need to know what's going on in the back of your head and you're also gonna have to work fast, so I highly recommend that you get a mirror. Before I actually bleached my hair, I went into Sally's and I got some advice from the sales lady. Um, she recommended that I light my hair with actual hair color instead of bleach. I picked up the Color Brilliance Permanent Hair Color in High Lift Cool Blonde. Honestly, I should have just skipped this step. It was a waste of money. Also, I decided to use Developer 40 and that was a mistake. My hair was weakened and it barely lightened at all. After that, I waited about a week for my hair to recover and then I went in with bleach. I decided to use Developer 30 and I did a test strand to make sure my hair wouldn't fall off. Now initially, I decided to mix the bleach by consistency. I didn't really measure it. Um, I just used uh, two caps from the tub. Then I just poured developer until it was a creamy consistency. I divided my hair into four sections, two over here and two underneath. I kind of chickened out on doing my whole head, so I did half of my head first, um, and then I was gonna do this part after I washed the bleach from the lower half. I know, it sounds really complicated, but I didn't wanna take any risks. I didn't wanna lose any hair. The way I applied it was um, kind of mid-shaft down, not too close to the roots because they tend to process a whole lot faster. Also, I have a sensitive scalp. I didn't want to risk it. I left it on for about 30 minutes to process. Then I went back in to cover my roots. Time is going to fly by even doing the roots. So you got to make sure you work quickly and work with your mirror. I washed everything off from the bottom half of my head um, in about 45 minutes total, it should have been 40. I waited 45 because I wanted my roots to process a little bit and it looked like this. I shall insert a picture right here. It was a little bit orangey, it didn't lift it as much as I wanted it to, of course, because I wanted platinum blonde. I didn't expect it to happen overnight. I went on to do my top half the same way, um, did the mid shaft and then I did the roots. I did not work as fast on my roots up top 
um, because I wanted to make sure everything was covered and that resulted in not having enough time to process them. So after that first bleach session, my hair reached about a level 8. It was uneven, my roots were yellowy, but I still did not went in with bleach until a week had passed because I did not want to kill my hair. Now for the second bleaching, I considered doing a bleach wash, but I thought it wouldn't be as effective, so I just did the same thing. But when I mixed the bleach, I actually followed the directions. I used two scoops of bleach and four of developer, and it did turn like a pancake batter like consistency. I did the same thing as before. I split my hair into four sections, but this time I went all in and I just decided to do it all in one step. I worked a lot faster. I used my mirror to make sure everything was even, and I also used a white tooth comb while I had the bleach on my hair to make sure everything was spread out evenly. I left the bleach on for about 30 minutes and then 10 minutes on my roots. This time around though, I didn't have time to put on a processing cap because I was working so fast and it was all in one sitting. Thankfully, it looked a lot more even than my first bleach session and it turned out like this. So that was the process of bleaching in itself. Now let's talk a little bit about toning. After my first bleach session, my hair was pretty yellowy, kind of orangey in some places, but I didn't want to have to use a toner with developer in it because that would further damage my hair. So I decided to tone with a semi-permanent hair color and conditioner mixed together. Basically fill this up to the top with the Tresemme conditioner and then I add one drop of the Manic Panic and mix that in until well incorporated. I will insert a picture so you can see the color. The mixture should turn out like a lavender color or a very light purple. I highly recommend you do a strand test before applying it all over your head just in case you went a little overboard with the Manic Panic. I left the mixture on for about 30 minutes because I wanted a deep conditioning as well. After my second bleach session, since my hair had lightened quite a lot, I decided to go with toner. This is where the Wella T18 comes in. I used this with Developer 20 and I left it on for 30 minutes. I love this stuff. It works a lot better than using the Manic Panic dye, but I do have to say, in my first bleaching, my hair wasn't light enough to see really dramatic results, so I don't want to judge them unfairly, but I do love this toner. It gave my hair just the right amount of ashiness where it doesn't look weird against my skin tone. While I was doing my research on toners, I noticed that a lot of people also liked the T14 toner by Wella. If any of you have tried either of these, please leave me a comment down below. I'm wondering which one works best. Now that we've gone through the bleaching and toning process, the most important part would be conditioning and keeping your hair in good shape. Most of the time, I just use unrefined virgin coconut oil. I know this stuff works amazing. And I try to keep my hair moisturized throughout the week by applying it on my ends. When it did get oily or my scalp got itchy, I would just put this on as an overnight hair mask and then wash it off the next day. But still, I didn't think it was giving me enough moisture and since I wanted to keep the bleaching sessions uh, within a week at a time, I decided to get a deep conditioning mask. I got the Aussie 3 Minute Miracle Moist and I did talk about this in my favorites videos. It's amazing. I mixed this in with the Shea Moisture Smooth and Repair Nourishing Hair Mask. I already had this for a long time. I love it. It smells like coconut. When I first applied this, I left this on for two hours. I wanted to make sure my hair soaked up all of the moisture and I saw such a drastic difference. This saved my hair after the bleaching session, so I highly recommend this if you're gonna bleach your hair. I also like using leave-in conditioners right after washing my hair. Even if I have deep condition, I just like adding moisture on moisture just to make sure my hair recovers. I like the It's a 10 Miracle leave-in product. I mentioned this in my favorites video. I also use the Rusk Sensories Smoother Conditioner. This is a leave-in conditioner that I depotted because I I had a salon size bottle. Lastly, I have been heat styling my hair, so I make sure I use heat protectant every single time I use hot tools. I like the Tresemme Platinum Strength Straightening Heat Protectant Spray. This works really well in protecting from heat and it also straightens the hair. So that's it for my going blonde story. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and that you can take something from it. I hope I answered some of your questions if you guys are thinking about going blonde yourselves. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any more questions about the whole process or if I left something out, please leave me a question in the comments down below and I will be happy to answer it for you. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.